This is John Hardy, consultant, orthopaedic surgeon, and we're talking today about superpatella plica. I'm going to show you a patient uh, who was very specific about his knee pain. The MRI scan was fairly normal uh, regarding the plica. No one commented on that. But this patient, uh, as most patients do, showed me exactly where his pain was in the suprapatellar region, and we marked that with a little arc. Now, we've known about the suprapatellar plica since 1928, and Garrett Pipkin uh, published this wonderful uh, review of suprapatellar plica. Um, but at the time, they didn't appreciate the consequences of the suprapatellar plica. As you know, all know, there's a resultant force of the patella on the femur, patella femoral joint, and that as you flex, it can go up to seven times body weight. However, add a plica, and that resultant force is even higher. Now, as you know, the suprapatella plica itself, while increasing the load on the patellofemoral joint, doesn't actually cause arthritis. The cause of the degenerate change seen here on the patella with the red arrow is because of impingement of uh, Hoffer's fat pad inferiorly. There's uh, Hoffer's fat pad. And as the fat pad impinges, it gets scarred. Scarring produces high pressure and degenerate change at one point. This, accompanied by the cyclic loading, a million steps a year for most adults, causes the degenerate change of the patellofemoral joint. So when dealing with a suprapatella plica, and I tend these days to use not the shaver you see here, but an Arthrocare ambient wand, but by dealing with the suprapatella plica, you decrease the load in the patellofemoral joint, by dealing with Hoffer's fat pad and the impingement, uh, then you allow the patella to recover. And usually in this patient, I was allowed to uh, arthroscope his knee 18 months later. And this shows the suprapatella plica has not reformed. Uh, and you can see the patella has largely recovered its cartilage. And that's without doing microfracture or anything else. I hope this helps.